So I'm John, I'm the, the engineering tech lead for the player analytics team. And to, to repeat some of what Ben was saying earlier in our keynote, the player analytics package will let you do three things. It'll let you manage your business against daily revenue targets, understand when and where players are spending, getting stuck and churning in your game, and then meet your daily uh, needs. So um, you get access to this pretty much for free by integrating with Google Play Game Services, which you might have been doing before for things like achievements, quests, save games, things like that. Um, but we're gonna look at uh, events right now. Events were the backbone for quests, and events allow us to monitor what players are doing in your game. We're gonna leverage that so we can monitor things like how they're doing, uh, things like spending money in your game or, or buying premium currency. So let's look at how that works. So you go to the console, and then you're gonna select one of the events that you created, and you can select those events, and you can set them to be either premium currency sources or premium currency sinks. And then after you annotate the events in, in the console, you'll go to your code, and in your code, just like what you did with events before, you'll tell us um, what these RPC calls uh, when players are actually getting the premium currency or spending the premium currency. This will allow us to analyze how premium currency uh, exists in your game and hopefully let you um, understand that yourself. But premium currency analysis is really just one of the few things that the uh, player analytics package does for you overall. So um, let's look at some other examples of how we can use this. So here we have Darlene the developer, and Darlene is convinced that the world needs another game about killing zombies and farming for corn. Um, in fact, she wants to make a game uh, in which you do both of these things at the same time, so she programs up her game, and then she launches it. And she finds, just after her launch, that lots and lots of people are playing her new game, Zombie Farmer. And this is fantastic, of course, because uh, some of these people are actually paying her money. But she doesn't iterate on her game, and what she finds 30 days after she launches is that not so many people are playing her game. Well, this kind of freaks her out, of course, um, and naturally, she's gonna have a lot of questions, like, do people like corn farming as much as she does? Do they like killing zombies more? Should she add more zombies, less zombies? Is this game too hard or too easy? These are all great, great questions, but without any analytics, she can't answer them. So the way that we try to answer these questions for her is we build detailed time series of what's going on with every single user that is connected to Google Play Game Services in her game. And we create these time series. In these time series, we put everything that we know about the player. So here's another example of a time series. But the things that go in these time series are things like all of the achievements that they've earned, all of the events that they've unlocked, every spin that they do, um, whenever they hit retention, whenever they abandon the game, pretty much everything we know about the players we put into these time series. Once we have these time series, and we could have millions of time series, of course, for um, all of the players that are playing games, we aggregate information about these uh, time series together, spin statistics, retention statistics, progression statistics. In fact, actually, let's look a little bit more at progression statistics. What, um, what we do right here is we're defining progression as the number of achievements that someone has unlocked during your game. And what Darlene finds is that um, once people get to level six of, uh, of unlocking achievements, only 50% of them get to level seven. So Darlene decides that she wants to make a new version of her game in which she makes level seven easier. After she does that, she launches that, and she comes back to our retention widget in which we've broken down retention by cohort. And she finds that people that started playing her game um, before only had 20% two-day retention, and maybe afterwards they have 50% retention. So this right here is an example of the business drivers page that we have. And this is really powerful because it allows Darlene to compare how her game is doing to other games in her same genre, making roughly the same amount of money as hers. All the boxes that we have here in green um, in this made-up example indicate that her retention statistics are actually just fine compared to other games, but her spin statistics, in particular her ARPU, is much lower. So she clicks on the ARPU button and she gets a drill-down piece of information for ARPU. So here on the top we have a graph that shows, um, broken down by a day over the last 28 days, what her ARPU was. But in addition to ARPU, we also have our PPU, we have conversion rate, we have basically all of this, the, the spin statistics that we could cram into a graph. The general idea that, that's coming out from this is that once she's launched her game, she needs to continue iterating on it, and we provide the analytics package that allows her to do that so she can make her game better and better and get more and more players in her game. The main thing to take away from this is that player analytics allows you to do three things, and I think this is probably the sixth time you've heard us say something like this, but it allows you to manage your business against daily revenue targets, understand when and where players are getting stuck or churning in your game, 
and quickly identify the business metrics that, uh, that are in most need of your uh, attention. We'll be at the Code Labs today. Please feel free to grab me and we can talk about how to get this into your game. <laughs>